Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for The Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on The Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was submitted by Peter who is an intermediate photographer from Sweden and Peter actually created this image for the assignment feature of The Mindful Eye's community. If you are not aware of this yet or you don't spend time in our community, um, if you'll click on community um, and the menu bar on the home page and then go to um, assignments you'll see that we're up to assignment number four the theme for this assignment was smile and we've had uh, quite a few great submissions and so I know I'm getting ahead of myself here but I wanted to go ahead and feature this image and we'll be featuring another image from the smile assignment and some honorable mentions on the photo of the week uh, in a couple of weeks from now um, Peter shot this with a Nikon D80 we don't know the lens um, and Peter says that this is an image of his daughter says she's playing and then in parentheses slamming on the piano and he says I think this image makes you smile because of the small girl and the big heavy piano um, this image definitely made me smile but it, it really sort of made me smile from a place that had a lot of depth to it it wasn't just a oh I get it and the smile and then it's over um, this is an image that really sort of uh, seeps into my consciousness um, one of the things that I love about this image is the juxtaposition of uh, the little girl and it's not just the little girl sitting at the piano it's this view um, which is I think very profound and, and by that I mean you have the little girl she's not only sitting at the big piano but uh, she's sitting in the middle of the bench uh, she's centered on the piano and Peter has shot this in a very formal way and I can't overemphasize how much the camera position here um, and in her gesture, which is basically very rigid, straight up and down, almost like a concert pianist uh, beginning uh, a formal piece, um, how much all of that adds to the power of juxtaposing um, these, these two concepts. Um, the other thing that I love here is the fact that it's in black and white. Uh, very, very powerful. You know, if we're going for emotion or we want to affect people at the psychological level, we've talked a lot about this black and white a lot of times has more potential to do that because it's abstract and we get rid of the psychological and emotional baggage uh, that colors automatically come with so much of the time. Another thing that I really love about this image is the stunning quality of light on Peter's daughter here. Uh, you've got uh, a, a light in what looks like uh, uh, some kind of a really interesting fixture that's sitting on top of the piano it's creating a really beautiful pattern of light in the top of the image. It's really interesting too how this idea sort of rhymes Peter's daughter's head in the image. Um, and then you've got what looks like window light coming in creating a really beautiful accent here. Uh, you've got another um, light that's coming here. You have this real dimensional light um, on the shape of uh, Peter's daughter almost you know, similar to what we would get if we were uh, shooting more of a standard portrait where we were shooting somebody straight on. And what I mean by that is uh, when you look at this, you seem to get a sense of a kicker light here and then a dimensional light here. Um, we're just not seeing the face here, but really sort of beautiful how there seems to be this effect of a front light and then a kicker light to give dimension. So there's a great sense, even though Peter is shooting straight in here, of beautiful separation of his daughter from the piano and you could get a sense of compression but I cannot overemphasize what the light is doing for this image and just one of the takeaways from today's critique is uh, really starting to try and slow down and see light before you take pictures see opportunities where light can work this kind of a magic and, and create layered um, effects uh, and images really beautiful what's happening with the shadow over here um, I love that uh, it's almost a repetition of sort of the idea again of Peter's daughter happening over here whether or not that is the shadow maybe it's just coming from this and let me get all this um, writing out of the way here this is a really beautiful subtle sort of psychological repetition of Peter's daughter and the other thing that I'm enjoying about this is that you, you do have a real strong sense of formal symmetry obviously in this part of the image but then you have a tension and that formal symmetry gets broken up and the stuff that's running across the top of the piano that starts to give this a lot more depth other places to go to I love the little replica of the piano here these are really interesting objects in and of themselves and I love the way they're spread out and something that first bothered me a little bit when I looked at the image uh, was this part of the image 
and I said, you know, God is so formally symmetrical, wouldn't it be cool if this just repeated over here? But I actually played around with doing that in a very rough way in Photoshop, and it killed the shot. It just did something in terms of making it more of a one-note kind of shot instead of me being able to psychologically move around. And after I spent some more time with the image, at least for myself personally, I started to see, too, how this part of the image does a really beautiful job of rhyming what Peter's daughter is wearing just in terms of the check pattern and the graphic quality of these um, you know hard edge lines and rectangles and so on and so forth that, that you get in a plaid um, and it, it's really interesting to, to just see this shape there's a lot of neat rhythms in this image once you slow down and start to look something else I really enjoy about this is just the fact that there's a little bit of detail down in here this is an image that as I spent time with it I started to see more and more detail the bench is fascinating I love the radiator over here. Just kind of everywhere that I went in the image, um, it let me, uh, because of these details, um, I just had a, a richer and deeper experience um, with the image. And something else, you know, that I'll say here is uh, clearly subject matter um, has a huge effect on the viewer. I mean, what we choose to photograph. And just the archetype of music, just all by itself, just the idea of the piano being here. Um, very powerful for all kinds of people just because of how powerful music is um, in our lives. A really wonderful image and you know the last thing I'll say is that because of the way Peter has shot this that's not just over the shoulder it's from behind and clearly it lets the viewer um, go to all kinds of places in terms of imagining what is happening um, in terms of expression and, and the mood of this little girl. It lets people just project all kinds of stories that are connected to their own life, people they've known, a person that you've been when you were younger, and on and on and on. Very, very powerful. The idea of showing us something um, in terms of the little girl and the heavy piano, that's one juxtaposition, but another juxtaposition here is the idea of showing us something in a very literal, straightforward way, but then leaving out a very important component. Um, and and not telling the whole story and letting the viewer fill in the gap in a way where each person can tell a story about this image. It just gives a whole nother level of meaning to it potentially and, and that's really powerful. A couple of other things that I want to say today. Um, one is uh, just the concept of photographing things that are available to you and uh, you know trying to uh, become more creative by potentially sort of staying out of this mode of photography is something that happens away from home or in beautiful places and so on and so forth. The idea of what's available to you as a photographer, the idea of home, the idea of the familiar, the idea of the ordinary, not, not that there's anything ordinary at all to me about this image, but in terms of access, you know, if we think of the word ordinary, um, then we just start to be more creative. And the other thing I'd really like to encourage you to do is um, to participate in our community at any level, but we'd love to have you participate at the level um, of assignment. And there are quite a few people that email from time to time and they say, Craig, I know the workshop support the Mindful Eye so far, and uh, you know, I'm just, I, I live too far away to do a workshop, or I don't have the money to do a workshop. Um, if you uh, download from the site and that's all that you do, we're thankful that you're here. Um, it gives us an outlet for what we do, and we're deeply grateful for that. There's nothing else that needs to happen. But if you start to feel like, you know what, I would like to give back, but at this point in time, I don't have any money to do it, and I'm not going to take a workshop, then I can't tell you how powerful it might be if all you did was from time to time you just submitted an image to the community forum. Because every time you do something like this, it has the potential to inspire. It has the potential to have an effect on somebody. It could be the one little tipping point that keeps someone shooting. And photography for some people might be um, something that really is helping to keep them connected to the thread of joy uh, in their life. So we'd love to have you participate in the assignments. and. Um, I've been amazed at all the pictures that we've seen already. I think it's just a great way uh, to be more creative. I want to say a big thank you to Peter for sharing this wonderful image with us. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you for being here with us on The Mindful Eye. And hope you have a great weekend. Hope to see you again real soon, everybody.